Igor Novikov was born on this day, May 23rd, 1962. He's a Ukrainian-born American chess grandmaster, receiving the title in 1990. His highest rating of 2,614, 2614, was achieved in July of 1999. He has broken the top 100 on FIDE's list seven different times. His opponent in this game should be a name that's familiar to all, Gatakomsky, another foreign-born American immigrant. Gatakomsky was born June 2nd, 1974. In Siberia. And so, yeah, his chess career began in Russia. Even at the age of 12, Komsky defeated Mark Taimanov in a tournament game. Well, Komsky came to the United States in 1989, and I think he lives in New York right now. He became the youngest player ever to be rated in the top 10 back in July of 1990. This is Komsky, of whom we're speaking right now. And he was still untitled. This was interesting. He had not yet achieved his Grandmaster title. He went from outside the top 100 to number eight in the world before he actually officially received his title. Now, Komsky also contested for the world championship in 1995, but dropped out of chess in 96 to pursue his um, degree. Komsky came back to competitive chess in 2004. Komsky with pawn d4, knight f6, knight f3. Pawn d5, transposing to the symmetrical variation of the queen's pawn game. Bishop g5 transposing to Torres attack, named for Carlos Torre Repeto, who was the first ever Mexican grandmaster, if I'm not mistaken. C5, E3. Knight e4, bishop f4, queen b6, queen c1, knight c6, pawn c3, bishop f5, Queen's knight to d2. Rook c8 here. Knight to b3. Much more common is bishop e2. And I believe that that's probably the stronger move. Plus, you're ready to castle. So it's also the more principled move. Knight to b3 by Komsky. e6. Knight h4 I did not like because it allows a fork. Bishop e2 is still my preferred move here. G5 is played. 
Pawn takes c5. Bishop takes c5. Do not play knight takes c5. The knight's busy holding this fork together. So resist knight takes c5, which allows bishop takes g5. Knight d3 check is ineffectual because bishop takes knight, and after bishop takes bishop, queen to d2. And white is, at the very least, hakuna matata. So bishop takes the pawn. Knight takes the queen's bishop. And pawn takes the white queen's bishop. He played his knight from f5 to d4. I thought knight takes bishop might be worth a try here. And the idea is he's hoping that black would play um, either knight takes knight, which is wrong, or pawn takes knight, which is wrong. Now, of course, black doesn't have to play either of those moves. The best move is queen takes c5, but knight takes bishop would have been worth a try. Because there's chances that black would play this move, and it's the wrong move. If you play knight takes the knight, that obviously allows this fork. And if you play pawn takes this knight, that allows knight takes knight. And even though we still have pawn takes the knight after pawn takes the pawn, well, white is at least equal here. For that reason, I felt knight takes bishop was at least worth looking at. Instead, he played his king's knight to d4. Pawn takes pawn. And queen takes pawn I did not like. It's not a good idea to move into a pin. So I felt pawn takes pawn might be more prudent. Now, of course, on pawn takes pawn, black can play knight e5. White can try check. And black can say, okay, I will surrender castling rights. My point here, though, is that white is still putting up a fight in this line. Whereas I feel like with queen takes the pawn, you're asking for trouble because what do you do to a pinned piece? You attack it again. And that's exactly what Novikov does here. E5. Komsky with knight takes bishop. Pawn takes knight. Do not... Do not take this with your queen. If you play queen takes knight, knight takes the knight, pawn takes the knight, white has virtually equalized with bishop d3. I'm going to give that an equal sign. So e takes d4 is the right way to go. You might be able to play knight takes d4 as well. 
but not queen takes the knight. And definitely not knight takes the knight. Knight takes the knight is even worse. He takes d4 was played. Komsky tried queen h3. I thought pawn takes d4 was more hopeful. He played queen h3. I thought you could play pawn takes pawn here and hope that your opponent plays queen takes b2. Attacking the rook. If your opponent does acquiesce and play queen takes b2, you've got knight b3, and you're holding on for dear life. Now, of course, there would be nothing compelling black to play queen takes b2. He could first play queen b4 check, and then after the king gets out of check, then you can play this. And we don't much care that knight b3 can be played at this juncture. In fact, it wouldn't be so grand because once I get castled, I am on a big attack. But it, it's you've got to play moves that give you some hope especially at our level. At our level, you play pawn takes pawn. A lot of guys are playing queen takes pawn right away instead of playing the, the um, intermezzo queen before. Komsky goes with queen h3. Of course, that is threatening the rook here. which you can just lift it. Komsky's approach was to castle and defend, which is probably just as good. Knight takes knight, and you're not going to get to play knight g5, which would be winning, <laughs> but I'm not going to give you that. Well, I don't know. Can I play queen takes b2 here and see if he'll do something like knight g5 or knight f6? Well, the key to, to this is to understand if he plays knight f6, obviously you have to play king g7. If you play king h8, you've self-made it, right? <laughs> but after king g7 you should be perfectly fine if i give check you take my knight i can give check but you will be able to hide sooner or later and eventually this rook has to move to safety and black is golden So I guess you didn't have to take the knight, but this is soundest and safest. Now here Komsky tried queen f5. He really should get his bishop out of bed, in my opinion. Bishop c4 to keep the fight going. He's, he's not that bad off right now. So I'm not a big fan of queen f5. I give this a question mark. My choice is bishop c4. Komsky, knight e7. I mean, excuse me, Novikov, knight e7 puts him in danger right away. Uh, note that here you do not want to play queen takes b2. So you could have played it on the previous turn, but not here, because queen g5 check. And after king h8, queen f6, and as you can see, I've got a repetition. 
just back and forth. So understanding why your opponent makes the moves that they're making is pretty critical. Knight e7, though, and the check can be blocked by the knight. So queen b5. Hoping for a simplification. And we're not going to acquiesce. Do not make a trade to help your opponent invade. Novikov correctly played queen f6. If you play queen takes queen, bishop takes queen, this is very unclear to say the least. You might could pick up a pawn, though, and have a small advantage going into the endgame, a one-pawn advantage. Best is the move chosen by Novikov. Queen f6. You, you also do not want to play something like pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn, queen takes queen, pawn takes queen, pawn takes pawn, uh, rook takes pawn. And, okay, yeah, this is even worse than, than the other alternate line. Queen f6 was the right and correct and best move. I guess right and correct are the same word, aren't they? <laughs> Here, pawn to c4. I don't know why he's not getting his bishop out of bed. Bishop c4, again, in my mind, is the move. d3. d3 is much stronger than e3. If e3, we can queenside castle. Um, well, I mean, uh, the Eval bar is still favoring us. But d3 definitely stronger, containing that bishop for starters. h4, knight f5, rook d1, a6 hitting the queen, queen a5, rook takes c4. Rook h3, queen takes b2 here. And he'd love to get Rook e8 in. G4. B5. I, I question whether this is your best bet. I don't think black has lost anything here. I just question whether that was necessary. We'll run it. I'll try to remember to run this one through the analysis. I, I forgot on the first game. Now, the amazing Queen D2 here. Um, I say amazing, be, amazingly horrific. The purpose of queen d2 is to inhibit rook c1. But black gave up his knight. Your best bet is probably to take it. It's your last ditch. 
And you're you're when you play pawn takes knight, you're hoping for king g7. Of course, we're not going to play king g7. But you can see the point is if you play king g7, white can sacrifice his bishop uh here on d3. And after here, you've got this check. And white has some counterplay. Especially if black is foolish enough to come out to f6. Well, that's just going to lose, isn't it? Queen b6. So you'd have to come back. Black's probably still winning in either case. But your only fighting chance in my mind is pawn takes knight. Of course, if, if black is on the ball and we have no reason to believe he's not, he'll just play rook c2 here. And the bishop pretty much has to sacrifice itself anyway. Rook g3 check could still be played. Queen b6 can still be played. But white really has nothing to play for from here. And rook c1 will be played here. So queen d2 was meant to stop rook c1. But instead, Novikov played rook c2. Hello! Queen g5 check. Knight g7. Rook d2 to keep this rook from coming to e2, obviously. But now queen a1 check, rook to d1, queen c3 check, and of course, that is that. He resigned. He cannot play rook d2 because that allows checkmate here. And if he plays queen d2, well, we just win the queen, don't we?